Welcome back to another weekly news roundup. We're looking at the last week of news items in the hardware industry, including some updates to BIOS for motherboards with Optane support primarily, EK water blocks, SK Hynix developing GDDR6, and then a couple of topics on monitors, peripherals, things like that. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by the current bundle on the GTX 1060 and GTX 1080 video cards where you can get Ghost Recon Wildlands or For Honor at checkout. This comes alongside new MSRPs for the GTX 1080 series cards, now down to $500. You can learn more at the link in the description below. Following MSI and Gigabyte, Asus now has a BIOS update for their motherboards, primarily the B250, Q270, H270, and Z270 lines which is basically all of them, uh, for Optane. So if you were planning to buy Optane, Asus now has a BIOS update that will support it. You will have to install Windows Fresh to get that working, which is a bit of a, a downer, but that's what you have to do. So uh, Optane is supported on Asus now. It's also being added to ASRock boards. So ASRock following Asus, you can find those updates on their official website. The ASRock update applies to its 200 series entirely enables Optane memory, which is that $44 M2 stick you plug in to basically front load your primary drive. And that's on the ASRock app shop, which is their website, uh, their name for the, the downloads. So Optane, by the way, we have kits for it. We're working on a review. This is one that I, I wanted to push Optane, our review of it past embargo lift for once because it's different enough that it required some new testing methods and things like that. So we're looking at it. It's gonna take a little bit of time to figure out where it makes sense because it's not necessarily in enthusiast applications, but we will have tests eventually for Optane. In other news though, EK, the water cooling company, has new monoblock. So EK is the first company to launch a monoblock for the AM4 socket, and that is compatible first with the ROG Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, which is one of the main ones we've used for our Ryzen testing. We have plenty of shots of that board if you wanted to see it. The block uses a nickel-plated electrolytic copper cold plate, and that has an acrylic top. So uh, because it is 2017, of course, there are RGB LEDs in there as well. Uh, overall, though, you get a water cooling monoblock for AM4 sockets with some RGB stuff if you want it and an acrylic top so you can see what's going on in there. So that block is $137. They've got pre-orders up. Not sure that we're going to be reviewing it, though I'm sure someone will have videos out there, J maybe. <laughs> EK plans to start shipping that on May 12th. And then they've also got monoblocks for the Asus 200 series motherboards, not just AM4 here. This is going to be compatible with the Z270 Maximus 9 Apex, the ROG Z270 Strix Mini ITX board, and then of course that Crosshair 6 Hero for AM4. They also use nickel plated electrolytic copper cold plates with an acrylic top, and those are going to be priced at 137 for the M9A board, that's the Apex unit, and 137 for the Strix RGB board as well, also shipping on May 12th. In memory news, but not system memory news for once, SK Hynix, one of the world's biggest manufacturers and suppliers for actual memory dies, the chips that go onto the video cards and other things like memory modules, they are working on GDDR6, so they're planning to have that ready and entering into production around 2018. That's when mass production is supposed to start. They're working on 8 gigabit GDDR6 modules first, and uh, they will be joined by Samsung and Micron, who are also working on GDDR6 and have stated that they are working on GDDR6. The JEDEC group is still deliberating over the exact spec for GDDR6, though SK Hynix avows that their GDDR6 memory will operate at 16 gigabits per second per pin, which is a bit faster than the GDDR5X speed of 12 gigabits per second per pin. Additionally, running on a 384-bit memory bus, SK Hynix's new memory is allegedly capable of a 768 gigabyte per second bandwidth, this is in comparison to the 500 gigabyte per second bandwidth of G5X from Micron, depending on if you're looking at the 10, 11, or 11.4-ish gigabit per second modules from Micron. And that memory is supposed to reduce voltages by about 10% over G5, not G5X. Next news item is CPU coolers. So these are air coolers. You don't hear too much about those these days. FSP, known for power supplies almost exclusively, is now getting into the air cooler market. And they're doing that with the new Windale coolers. They have Windale 4 and Windale 6 models coming out. 
These are solderless designs, so they're assembling the actual heat sink, the fin stack, and the heat pipes without solder, which is supposed to improve the heat transfer, though that's always hard to tell until you actually test it if it's actually going to be useful. The Wendell 4 uses four heat pipes, as the name might suggest, and the 6 uses six heat pipes, and those are both 120 millimeter fan coolers with a 60 CFM fan stock that you could throw your own on there if you wanted to. FSP says that the Windale 4 can handle a 180 watt TDP and the Windale 6 can handle a 240 watt TDP, which is fairly high in terms of CPU cooler specs as advertised anyway. And both coolers are supposed to be about 160 millimeters tall, which makes them about 10 millimeters taller than most of the uh, coolers we've looked at recently, including those that are more compatible with the kind of small form factor boxes. So these are going to be a bit tall for those. Wendell 4 is going to be priced at $33 and 6 at $47, making them competitive with the uh, Cryo Rig and Hyper 212 and the Thermal Take Contact 12, though a bit more expensive. In peripheral news, we posted an article on the site this week about Razer's new Lance Head Mouse. They've got a wireless version that is competing directly with Logitech's G900. They're aiming for an esports audience where you care more about weight and mobility. Razer didn't really provide us with too many technical details so far, though we've posted them all on the website in the article. If you want to check that out, you can find the news link below. There's also a wired version of the Lance Head, which we have discussed more in that article. Another peripheral news, G Skill has a new keyboard. It's a TKL keyboard, so it's got 87 keys and it's the KM560. We don't have a price for it today. The KM560 will have Cherry MX switches. They will be red, brown, or blue, depending on your choice. And in terms of LEDs, it's just static red LED backlighting. No RGBs here to be found. You can adjust the brightness and lighting effects. That's something we've seen in the past several times, normally using hardware switches like an FN key combo to do that. Uh, there's no additional ports on it, so no USB pass-through, nothing like that. It's a pretty plain keyboard other than the LED backlighting and TKL asset. So that is a TBD on pricing and release, but look for the KM560 from G-Skill in the future. Silverstone's got a new case. It is the VT02 Mini STX case, following their traditional theme of using names that no one can remember. The VT02 is built for HCPC users and stream setups, so just a small streaming box. It is comparable somewhat to an Intel NUC form factor, and that is sized at 6.5 by 2.9-ish by 6 inches uh, width height depth. And Silverstone says that the new chassis will accommodate Intel stock coolers, though you could also use some of the small profile coolers uh, that are on the market if you wanted something like that. The VT02 will have two 2.5 inch SSD bays, probably don't need a whole lot more in that form factor. One USB 3 type A, one USB 3.0 type C, it's nice to see. These are uh, new trends for the case market where they're finally starting to add type C to this. Inwin was among the first uh, last year at Computex. They've got audio jacks as expected, so two 3.5 millimeter. CPU clearance is 46 millimeters, not very tall, but tall enough for a stock cooler. And then it's also got, interestingly, a mounting plate. So they've got a VESA-supported mounting plate. You can mount it to the back of a TV or monitor if you wanted to, if it also had a VESA spec support for uh, backside mounting. So pretty cool stuff. That should be around $32, current availability unknown. But that is the Silverstone VT02 Mini STX case if HTPC is of interest to you. Very quick honorable mention for Acer here. They had a press event about a week ago, end of last week, and they announced a lot of new monitors. Among them were 144 hertz panels. So if that's something you care a lot about, look into that Acer. Uh, the Predator Z271 UV and the X27 would be the models that probably our audience is most interested in, uh, including the X27, which is a 27 inch IPS panel at 4K resolution with a 144 hertz refresh rate and NVIDIA G-Sync and HDR10 and Toby eye tracking and a four millisecond response time. So that is the flagship. It'll be expensive, but uh, go Google for that one because it's, it's interesting stuff to look into if you care about monitors. But that's all for this week. As always, you can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Subscribe for more or gamersnexus.net to follow this stuff as we post it throughout the week. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.